In May 2008, a frightening tornado outbreak occurred across the U.S. Great Plains, producing 173 tornadoes, nine of which were rated EF3 and above. The worst by far was an EF5 rated twister that killed nine people and decimated half of the city of Parkersburg, Iowa, which 1,800 people called home. The eyes of the nation were given a horrifying display of what happened to the community when a bank security camera captured the destruction of a home across the street from the bank. The home was soon followed into oblivion by the bank itself, an event also caught on camera. The damage to Haiti's presidential palace was one of the most visible symbols of the 2010 earthquake that brought the country to its knees. The magnitude 7 earthquake struck only 16 miles from Haiti's capital city of Port-au-Prince. When the earthquake began, the second floor quickly collapsed as a result. Meanwhile, those inside scrambled for some kind of safety as massive chunks of debris fell from the building's walls ceilings, and support columns. The palace was almost completely wrecked, and was so far gone that it had to be demolished. Beyond the earthquake itself, the destruction of such a prestigious building sent a ripple of terror throughout the country, as even the presidential palace was not safe from the effects of a disaster that took the lives of over 150,000 people, and destroyed over a quarter of a million buildings.
Sendai City was one of the closest major cities to the epicenter of the magnitude 9.1 earthquake that struck eastern Japan on March 11, 2011. The distance between the city and the epicenter was only 130 kilometers, and this CCTV footage from a Sendai clothing store shows the terrifying effects that it had on unsuspecting victims. Much of the city was then buried underwater by a massive tsunami that followed the earthquake. For much of the year, Australia suffers some of the worst wildfires on the planet. On November 25, 2015, the Pinery Fire was accidentally ignited in the South Australian countryside, and eventually grew into a massive bushfire that scorched 210,000 acres of wildland. On the first day, the fire was described as a two-kilometer long wall of fire with flames taller than buildings. This video was taken from a fire truck on its way to evacuate properties in the fire's path one hour after it was ignited. However, the responding firefighters were quickly taken by surprise as choking smoke made it impossible to drive. Then, out of nowhere, the fire then ate its way towards the road they were on with utterly terrifying results. Oh, 
We're going to go into burn over very, very quickly. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Get the fucking fuck in. Get the fucking fuck in. Get the fucking fuck in. Burn over, Scotty. Burn over. Burn over, Scotty. firefighters aboard these trucks survived and no injuries were reported. A miracle under those circumstances. The fire moved so quickly that it did not have time to set the trucks on fire or injure the firemen. On the other hand, two civilians died in the Pinery Fire, 90 more were hospitalized, and hundreds of buildings were burned to the ground. The fire was so fierce that it took a week and 1,700 firefighters to fully suppress. Few tsunami videos show the contrast between calm and catastrophe as one such video, recorded in Oirase, Japan, when the March 2011 tsunami occurred. The tsunami arrived in three massive waves, the largest of which had a height of 5 meters. Cumulatively, the water reached much higher levels as each wave built on the last. At first, the sea appears calm, the tsunami seems no more than an offshore spectacle, and the seawalls look as though they can hold back even large waves. The 2011 tsunami shattered any such assumptions when it made landfall. It started as a steady trickle into the town's harbor, and from there it became a tide from hell that didn't stop. Eventually, it overcomes the seawall completely, forcing the person recording to flee to a safety tower as the tsunami saturates the city beyond with the force of the Pacific Ocean.
In April 2022, the city of Andover, Kansas was hit head-on by a severe tornado. Security cameras across Andover captured the EF3 tornado brushing or tearing through numerous public properties, including City Hall and several schoolyards. Its 155 mile an hour winds carried a shower of flying debris that would have eviscerated anyone caught in the open. The silence of the footage, coupled with the deadly barrage of debris, create a uniquely chilling experience that would be lethal to observe in person. Fortunately, despite widespread property damage, casualties from this disaster were limited to three injured.
The Desert Rock Exercises were a series of training operations held by the United States in the Nevada desert to simulate combat conditions during nuclear war. Tens of thousands of servicemen participated in these tests from 1951 through 1957. Some of these exercises brought the participating soldiers within 400 meters of the mushroom cloud, less than an hour after detonation, and the shock of witnessing such a spectacle time after time from up close resulted in a number of suicides. Many troops were exposed to radiation at the site, as were civilians downwind from the desert, but these victims were denied compensation for their illnesses until the 1990s. What you're about to hear are the sounds of an F5 tornado. This tornado left 36 people dead across the communities of Bridge Creek and Moore, Oklahoma, and many points in between, on May 3, 1999. The mile-wide tornado ripped through Moore, just a few streets over from where this video was filmed. As the family abandoned the camera on a windowsill before heading to shelter. Meanwhile, from a safe distance, a Doppler radar truck recorded wind speeds of 302 miles per hour, or 486 kilometers per hour, inside the tornado, just 32 meters above the ground. These winds were the strongest ever recorded on our planet, and the sound they make is unforgettable. Moore was ravaged once again by another EF5 tornado in 2013.
On New Year's Eve of 2019, three fire engines of Australian structure firefighters were dispatched to assist wildland firefighters tackling the South Nowra fire in New South Wales. As they traveled through the forest to their destination, the front of the fire set the forest ablaze on both sides of the road, turning it into an oven from which there was no escape but to drive straight ahead through increasingly thick smoke. The fire crews drove as far as they could through the inferno-ridden forest before the heat became too much. Watch 38. Fire engines themselves ground to a halt as their metal parts warped and the trucks started to melt down from the outside. One of the firemen communicated over the radio that they were preparing to evacuate their trucks on foot. Several of them called or texted their families as they donned their full protective equipment to brave the nightmarish conditions outside. Firecoms, firecoms, does anyone copy on this channel? Red, red, red. Yeah, fire comms. Pass your red message. Identify yourself and pass your red message. This is STP48. We are part of Strike Team Golf. We are on Haynes Road. Our truck and pump 211 Bravo are inoperable. We have been overrun. Our trucks will not move. Our trucks are catching a light. We need immediate assistance. Over. Fire comms STP48, yourself and 211 Bravo, overrun. Trucks are broken down, need immediate help. Is that correct? Over, you sheltering in the vehicles? Over. Affirmative, we are sheltering the vehicle. We do not know how much longer we'll be able to shelter. The main fire front has passed. We are considering using BA to go out on foot as the main fire front has passed and our truck is on fire. Fire comms STP48. Understood. You may use BA to get out of the vehicle. Um, we'll endeavour to get assistance as soon as possible. Firefighters in the footage managed to make it out of the forest alive and uninjured. But when they returned to the burnover site the next day, they found that their engines had been burned to a crisp soon after they had left them. The Australian bushfires of 2019 to 2020, also known as the Black Summer, resulted in the deaths of 479 people and the destruction of 9,300 buildings. An estimated 1 billion animals also burned to death as 60 million acres were burned by the fires. Given the ferocity of the flames, the firefighters in this video were lucky not to join the ranks of the dead. Perhaps the most jaw-dropping footage of the 2011 Japan tsunami was recorded in Utatsu Town, in the city of Minami Sanriku. The narrow coastline ahead of the town funneled the tsunami waters directly into the city, flooding everything in sight and crushing buildings against each other before carrying them away. 
Both of the tsunami evacuation zones in Minami Sanriku were also flooded, despite being 20 meters above sea level. After five minutes, the cameraman flees up the hillside, as the water threatens to take him with it. I'm 
Kita ngatuhin ya. Kita ngatuhin ya. Sige na yun na. Sige ko, antahin na ka lang. Kalau mai di Madrid, siapa ni? Kalau mai nama di Madrid, aku ni naik juga Osman. Nah, ya, ya, mai tu na, cuma nak cuci tu lah. ラジオのニュース切ったかねえこれうちもいやいやいやいやAfter proceeding inland for as far as it can, the tsunami starts to return to the ocean. Some channels of water keep proceeding into the town, while others start to head back to the Pacific. The tsunami and its assorted debris 
would then reach as far away as Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States, and the tsunami would break icebergs off of Antarctica. Altogether, 95% of the town's buildings were completely destroyed, and 1,200 people lost their lives in Minami San Riku. Even this staggering figure was just a fraction of the 19,000 people who perished in the March 2011 disaster.